Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show how we can think of strings as a data structure we can use as part of an extended example. So I've previously covered how strings have multiple macros dedicated to it within Marla. We have uppercase, lowercase, upper first, lower first. We can also work with substring, and we saw we can also work with range because kind of internally, based on how JavaScript understands things and because Harlow is based on JavaScript, that strings are a kind of character array. And so they have positionality, and we can use those positions to access individual things called characters. So let's kind of build on that, on that idea as part of this video. So pretty commonly, there was a format before Excel and before a number of other programs called comma-separated values. This was a way of taking a large database of information and organizing it as a kind of string value, or as we might call it, a text value. So we have comma-separated values, and it pretty commonly looked something like this, where each line would have information, and then commas would separate that information. Again, comma-separated values. So what we can do, though, is because we understand strings as a kind of data structure, we can act on them to divide it up and, and use that information. In fact, we already saw a macro to do that previously. In a previous video where we examined strings as a kind of data structure, we looked at words. If we want to divide up a string that has a bunch of words in it, to it into an array containing those words and also split, which allows us to act on a particular special word or symbol or other things, and translate an existing string into an array containing parts of that string. So, if we have comma-separated values, then we can take that information and split it back up into rows and columns as if it was part of a table or part of a spreadsheet. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here we have a temporary variable data set to a literal copy and paste from an existing example database. I have an address, an amount, and then I have copied and pasted all of this right here exactly as it was within a file. So I've not changed any of this data, and it's in comma separated values, CSV format. So this format uses a new line, which is me pressing the pressing of enter at the end, is what that means. A new line character, again think of characters as the individual position within some string, and a comma to separate values. Each row ends with a new line, and each column ends with either the new line or, or either the new line or a comma. So we have one, two, three, four, five rows, and we have two columns. So let's use the split macro because this is string data, and string is just another data structure to first divide this up by the new line. So we're going to divide up rows. So we're going to have address amount as one row. Ninety three is going to start the next one. 380, 177, 202. There's a bunch of different rows. So the first thing we're going to do is split this data right here based on the new line from its existing string data structure into an array of different rows. Then we're going to use this information out here to change this even farther. So what we're going to do is for each row, and remember we saw the for macro working with different data structures previously, we're going to set columns to split by comma rows, and then we're going to print out here using the print macro, and we saw this first in a previous video where we can do concatenations and other operations working with string values, working with this macro right here, to, spread out, to pr uh, print out, that is, one and two, so the first and the second. So what this is all going to do is first we're going to split all of this into rows, then down here we're going to split all of these rows into columns, and then we're going to spit it back out again, address amount, and then everything back out. So let's go ahead and start this just so we can see what I'm talking about. And then here we have address amount, address amount, address amount, address amount, address amount, which is not too terribly complex, right? It might take us a little bit of time to work through how we can kind of translate this into what we know about Harlow, but we can do it. We can split on different things, different symbols within strings, and reconstruct this data. So we can take a data right here, a format we can literally spit out of a Google spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet and save it as comma-separated values. We could copy and paste it into Twine or into something we're using to work with Harlow, and now we can work with this data because it's just another data structure. So by understanding split, we can split by new line, and then down here, reconstruct the whole thing. Now you'll notice I have something here called results, which can seem a little strange. What in the world am I doing with results? Well, results is going to be used in the next passage. 
because I just wanted to explain what I was doing to really show how this can be incredibly useful. So I've just copied and pasted data into here as data, and then we've divided it back up so you could see what I was doing. So let's use results over here to do something different. So instead of just showing you those two things using print each time, I have this passage using the same general code and the same general pattern now build an HTML table using the exact same approach. So we still have the exact same data. We're still dividing it up right here into rows. But now what I'm doing is I'm using table right here and I'm constructing a table out of it. And the way I'm going about it is information we learned in the previous video by looking at strings as a kind of data structure. We can perform concatenation, which means we can use the addition symbol to glue different string values together to build another string value. So here I'm setting table to table right here. And then at different parts, I am gluing parts, what's called concatenation, back together right here. So table is equal to table plus a table row place table data, closing table data, closing table row, closing table. And I'm using some knowledge of how HTML works to build this, but I'm building an HTML table using the exact same approach I just showed. And in fact, this is a generic way of doing this. So it could be anything in here. This data up here could be anything that's saved in comma separated value format, and it would work exactly the same. You would divide things up into rows, and it would reconstruct this entire table. And then down here, I'm just showing table as a variable value, but I could have also used print to do the same thing. So if we build this, we will see something a little different. We will see result right here as an HTML table built with the knowledge of how string data structures work by splitting them up, first by new line, then by comma, and reconstructing the whole thing as a table. So what does this have to do with Harlow, and why really should we care? Well, there might be situations where you have external data of some sort, and you've copied and pasted it into some particular passage. Based on what I've just showed, as long as you know the structure of the data, that is, what kind of divides it up, you can split that data and use it in different ways. In this particular way, we took data that was in comma-separated value format, and we built an HTML table out of it. And you could also do something very similar in the same way. You could take some data that was copied and pasted into another passage, read the content of that passage, and then do something with that data as a result. And this can be a really useful way to build more complex stories based on, based on author data that comes from another source. So for example, if you had a spreadsheet of different information, copy and paste that in CSV format, read it in using what I've just shown right here, and then do something with it. So for example, you might have a history of a world, or you might have different lines a character might say. And so by using this similar approach, by splitting up that data, we can then read it back in and do something with it within our stories. So across both examples here, we notice how having knowledge of how strings work as another data structure within Harlow can be incredibly powerful to allow us to convert data between different formats. And here we converted strings into arrays and then kind of back into strings again by having knowledge of how it works, dividing it up in the comma separated value format. So incredible powerful techniques as to think about the kinds of examples and the complexity of stories we can do within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.